Hey wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. Now today we're going to be painting this nice green hill scene and for that we're only going to use one brush. Now, as you can see here, I personally will be working in Procreate, but you can follow along with really any software of your choice as long as you are familiar with basic tools like paintbrush, color selector and layers really, you should be able to follow along. So with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So this is a piece that you could very easily customize. You could change the season, you can change the time of day just by changing the color. That being said, to make it easier for you to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, if that's what you want to do, I included my color palette. It is free. You can download it from the description below. So feel free to pause the video here if you want to go ahead and download that. Again, it is totally free. And then we're going to jump straight into drawing the big shapes to figure out the basic composition of our piece. So here we're simply going to start by setting the background, which in my case is going to be just a nice blue because that's what I want to use for my sky. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my example here. And if you're working in a software that is not Procreate, you would just create a layer, rename that new layer to background, and then drop in your color onto that layer. But if you're working in Procreate like me, whenever you create a canvas, there's always a background color layer that comes within that canvas. So we can just go ahead and tap on that and then select the color from there. So my sky here is going to be a pretty standard blue in the color palette it is this one right here on the top left but again this is something you could customize so you could go with more of a gray if you want to have a stormy landscape you could go with a nice orange if you want to have you know a sunset or something like that and if you're not exactly sure how to do that how to pick your colors i encourage you to just google the time of the day or the season that you are taking inspiration from and just look at literally the colors of the different elements based on those reference pictures that you're going to see. Now from there, as I mentioned, we're just going to map out the basic big shapes. And for that, you have a couple different options on how you could map out those shapes. I know a lot of people like to color block using a selection tool, so drawing a selection and then filling that selection. Here, I want to have something that has more of a painterly style, so I'm just going to use one brush for the entire thing. So the brush you use here obviously is totally up to you and it depends on the vibe that you want in your final piece, of course. That being said, I do have a few suggestions, especially if you're working in Procreate. If you want something that has more grit, so if you want something that looks a little bit more like a pencil drawing or something that is drawn on paper, I recommend going in the charcoal pack that comes with the app and picking either the willow charcoal or the vine charcoal. If you want something that has more of a paint feel and less of a papery pencil vibe, I recommend going in the painting pack that comes with Procreate and picking the gouache brush. I think it's fairly low in the list. Yeah, so you're going to have to scroll, but it should be in there. If you're working in a different software, any kind of brush you're comfortable with, it could even be just a basic round brush. Again, this video is really not about a specific brush, so anything that you're comfortable with should work here. In my case here, I'm going to be working with a brush from my inking, stippling, and texture bundle. These brushes are not essential at all, but if you do want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below, and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. So the one I will be using in this video is in the inking pack that comes within that bundle. It is the Bleeding Ink Wet. Now, no matter which brush you're using, what we're going to do is we're going to create different layers for all the different hills. So go ahead and create a new layer above your background, of course, and rename that new layer to Hill 1. Now, no matter which color palette you want to use for your piece, the further away an element is, in general, the paler the color is going to be, and the more gray is going to be in the color. So the less vibrant and, well, colorful the color is going to look. So for the hill, the further in the back, I'm going to go with a really pale grayish green. So in the color palette, it is this one right here. As you can see, it is the fifth column, the first row. And then if you want here, you can test the size of your brush, but honestly, it doesn't really matter because we're just mapping out big basic shapes as long as you have control over your brush. Again, that's really all that matters. And we're going to start by mapping out a hill that is going to be on the right side of the frame, roughly in the middle in terms of the height. Now the exact shape is obviously totally up to you. I'm going to go with kind of this section we're not going to see, so I'm just going to draw this curve. But then the actual part that we're going to see, I'm going to draw kind of two little bumps. And 
And then from here, depending on the style you want, you could just make your brush really big and then fill in the inside of that shape. That would give you the most texture. Or you could just fill in the area by dropping in your color. That being said though, because we are using more of a painterly style of brush, there's probably going to be a little bit of a gap between your stroke and your fill, so you can just come back over and fill in that gap manually. So that's really all we're going to do for now, we're just going to repeat these steps for the other three hills that we have in the front. So you can go ahead and create a new layer above hill 1 and rename that new layer to hill 2. So because we're getting closer to the viewer, we're going to have a slightly darker color that is a little bit more vibrant. So in the color palette, we're just going to move to the left of the one we just used, this one right here. Again, here the shape is totally up to you. I'm going to have the summit, or it's not really a summit, but the top, the highest point of the hill, be a little bit higher than this one. But otherwise, it's going to be fairly similar in the sense that it's going to be pretty much in the middle, vertically, of that piece. Then same thing again, coming closer to us, creating a new layer above the two we have, renaming that one to Hill 3, and coming in with a quite a bit darker green this time. Here I'm going with something that is slightly out of that kind of green gradient that we have to make it look like maybe that is a different kind of lawn on that hill, maybe that's kind of a like a lawn instead of just a wild grass. So the green I will be using for this hill is, again, just to the left of the one we just used, right here in the color palette. And this hill, I'm going to have it be more of a, a curve, so kind of a very soft U-shape rather than actual, you know, hills. So something kind of like this, roughly. And last but not least, we're going to add one more hill in the front. This one is going to be super vibrant green, kind of a, you know, a green apple green. So a new layer on top of all the ones we have so far. This one is going to be named Hill 4. And we're going to pick this nice green, again, just to the left of one we just used in the color palette, right here. So at this stage, feel free to pause the video and take all the time you need to just play with those basic shapes. I know it is really, well, basic right now, but it is worth taking the time to make sure you're happy with the composition at this stage, because if you're not, it's going to be really hard to reel the piece back in together as we keep going. So what I mean by that is making sure you're happy with the positioning of them all. Let's say, for example, I feel like I see too much of this hill. What I could do is just take all the other ones and lift them up. Because they're all in separate layers, that's super easy to do. So we can just go ahead and select all the layers we want to move. And to do that in Procreate, you can just swipe multiple layers towards the right to select them all. So in my case, L4, L3, L2. And then you can use any kind of tool you have to move stuff around in piece. So in Procreate, it's the arrow right here. And you can just move them around. You can even use some sort of a distort tool to stretch them in any direction as needed until you're super, super happy with your basic composition and structure. So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to do that, and once you're done, we're going to just finish mapping out the basic shapes by adding some clouds and a little bit of a lake. Awesome, so once you're happy with your basic hill shapes, we're going to add a couple more basic shapes, the clouds and the water. So we're just going to create more layers again so we can move them around as needed, starting with one for the lake. 
So the lake, in my case, I'm going to put it between hill four and hill three, but you could put it wherever else you want. So I'm going to create my new layer between hill four and hill three, and I'm going to rename it to lake. And in this case here, I'm going to just use the same color as I use for the sky for the lake because it's a reflection of the sky. So you can just color pick it or find it in the color palette again. And I'm going to put my lake in this kind of nook right here. Again, moving it as needed. I feel like maybe this point is a bit too high. There we go. Now the last shapes I'm going to add are going to be some big clouds that don't look realistic, but I just really like that style, so I'm gonna go with that. You could go with some completely different shapes of clouds, but I recommend no matter which shape you draw, of course, putting them on the layer right above the background, so behind hill one creating a new layer there, and renaming that new layer to clouds. So for the cloud, I'm going to use a super pale version of my sky color. In the color palette, it is this one right here. And then I'm going to really just map out the general shape of the cloud. So I'm gonna go with something quite big and tall, and I'm really just for now going to draw the very classic, you know, this kind of cloud shape. Now one thing though, make sure that whenever you draw the little curves, they're not all the same size, because that looks really weird. You wanna have some variety in the size of your C curves. might draw a couple more just so it's not one cloud that's kind of weird so maybe a smaller one here and then one off to the side And of course, moving everything as needed. So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to finish mapping up your basic shapes. And once you're done with that, we're going to add some very simple gradients to start giving a little bit more life to the piece. Great. So now that we have our big shapes, we're going to come back in and add a couple of gradients just to give a little bit more interest to the piece before we start painting. So the gradients we're going to add are going to be in the sky and on the hill in the front. Now, if you have a gradient tool in your software, you can just use your gradient tool, super easy, but in Procreate, we don't have one. So we're going to have to use a bit of a workaround, which is still pretty easy, but it's a few more steps. So we're going to start with the sky. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to create a new layer below the clouds, but above the background, of course. And we are going to rename this new layer to Sky Gradient. And here we're just going to pick a lighter version of our sky color. So in the color palette, it is this one right here, right under the sky color we used. And with this color, with the same brush, but probably quite big, we're just going to paint a blob towards the bottom section of the sky. So kind of like this, I know it looks crazy, bear with me. And then we're going to just add a blur to create the gradient itself. So whatever blur you have in your software should work perfectly fine. Although if you're not working with Procreate, chances are you have a gradient tool, so you can just use that. But in Procreate, the blur options are in the adjustment panel right here at the top. In the second section of this adjustment panel here, you're going to have three blur option. My favorite one is Gaussian blur, so that's what I'm going to pick. And then you can add some blur by swiping your pencil or your finger towards the right. 
and remove some blur by swapping it towards the left. So the idea here is just finding what you like for your blur. You don't want something that is completely washed out because then you don't see the gradient, but you also don't want something that just looks, you know, like a very harsh edge. So something in between, but the exact number is a personal preference. I think I'm going to go around 50%. Maybe a bit more, actually. Let's go with 58. So we're just going to do the same thing on hill 4 as well. So you could just go ahead and create a new layer above hill 4 and rename it to hill 4 gradient. And here we're just going to go with a slightly darker version of our green apple green just to give a little bit more interest in that hill because it is so close to us we want it to look a little bit more detailed and vibrant. So for that we're going to use uh, this green right here in the color palette. Once more it's right under the main one that we use for that hill, so right here. We're going to do the exact same thing, so this time we're just going to paint a little blob at the bottom of this hill. Again, the exact shape really does not matter at all, but something kind of like this. And then we're going to add some blur. So in the adjustment panel here, Gaussian blur, and swiping towards the right to add a little bit of blur. I'm going to go here with 40 because it's a smaller shape. Now if you feel like your gradient is getting out of the shape, you can always use an eraser and clean it. But I feel like in my case it's pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Although I might go ahead and just merge those two layers to keep my file organized, because otherwise we're going to have so many different layers. So the way to merge layers in Procreate is super simple. You just take two fingers and you squish the layers you want to merge together, quite literally. So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to work on those gradients, or if you want to add extra gradients, you could just use the same steps and do that. I'm personally going to keep it like this for this piece because we are going to be using more of a painterly style to add the rest of the lights and shadows. Great, so at this stage, we're going to really just come in and paint. It's going to be super fun, really quite relaxing. I'm going to give you some tips as we go, of course, but I'm also going to let you do your own thing a little bit. Don't worry though, I'm not just gonna bend on you. Of course, I'm going to have my video going when I'm not giving you tips. But what I like to do here is coming front to back and just painting some lights and some shadows very, very roughly and quickly. I don't want to focus on details really at this stage. We're going to have a whole other chapter about details. I really just want to focus on big splotches of light and big splotches of shadows. So we're going to start again on the first or the hill the closest to us, so hill four. And you can paint straight onto that hill if you want, but I like to just create another layer on top for safety. And once I'm happy with everything, then I can come back in and merge if I want to, but I do recommend we keep for now these two layers separate. So just go ahead and create a new layer above hill four and rename that new layer to hill four painting. And here, we're going to use the color palette, of course, but I'm also going to give you tips on how you could approach color picking the different colors and changing them manually to give even more life to your piece and customizing the piece even more. So we're going to start here by just mapping out some very light section of grass on top of that hill because the hill is super close to us, so we're going to see some different patches of grass quite clearly. So to do that, we're just going to start with one color that is in the color palette. We're going to start easy. It's going to be this one at the bottom of the second column. And with the same brush, you can play with the size, of course. The exact size doesn't matter at all. What we're going to do is we're going to draw some long strokes towards the top of the hill because the sun is kind of hitting the hill, so the top is the one that is the brightest, at least in my light scenario. So again, really quick, really loose, as you can see. Really no right or wrong way to do this here at all. Now 
Now, if you wanted, you could totally leave it like that, of course, and just move on to the next big shape. But I think it is worth taking the time to try and add more painting colors. And the way to do that is very simple. You're just going to go over and change this color that we're using, make it a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker until it becomes essentially the rest of the green, so the main green we have. So what I mean by that is I can just really make my color slightly darker. As you can see, it's really not a big difference. And come over and keep adding more painting lines. Getting it even darker. Maybe making my brush a little bit bigger here. And just adding some more painting lines. So as you can see, it's really, really quick. We're not focusing on any details at all, but we're adding a lot of texture to the piece quite quickly and in a very interesting way as well. Now I feel like I might have erased a little bit too much of my paler green, so I can just come back in, color pick, and keep layering my strokes until I'm happy with the general painting vibe. So essentially we're really just going to repeat this step for all the other hills and all the other main big shapes. But the further away we get, so for example this hill in the back, the fewer elements we're going to have, the fewest different colors we're going to have within one big shape. So let's say we move on to the water here. We can just create a new layer above the lake and rename that new layer to Lake Painting. The same thing here, we're just going to go with a lighter version of the base color. So in the color palette, because we are using the color of the sky, we can just pick that super bright blue right here, which we use for the sky gradient. And then with our brush, probably a little bit bigger because again, we don't have to have as many details. We're going to come in and just draw those painting lines. Once more, you could keep it super simple and rough like this, or you could just change your color, add more color variation and more strokes. The exact colors you use don't matter in the same way as the exact same brush size and strokes don't matter either. It's really like if you were working with paint, you would create your own mixes, you know, you would create them manually on the set of your piece, but you also create them as you paint the colors with mix together. So that's essentially what we're trying to do here. You can also play with the hue. So here, the bottom of my sky gradient, so the top of the lake was kind of a more of a teal kind of blue, and the top of the sky and the rest of the lake is more of a, a blue that has some purple in it, so you can play with the hue as well. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider helping the channel by giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't already. Now, I know everyone on YouTube is asking me to do that, but believe it or not, it does help us and our channels a lot because it just tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thanks for helping. Then doing the same thing on hill three, so this really nice dark hill, creating a new layer above it, renaming this new layer to hill three. And here we're going to start having less color variation because the hills are getting further away from us. So in the color palette, we're going to start with this kind of green right under the darker one. It's hard to see, but trust me, it's right there. It's just slightly different. And we're going to use that to paint the top. Maybe banking it a little tiny bit darker, really not a lot. 
and blending those strokes in a little bit. Again, here we don't want to have too much details. And you get the point, we're going to do the same thing on the other two hills in the back. I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus, but just know for these, we're really just going to have one color and it's going to be very big splotches instead of these tiny strokes. Great, now we're also going to paint the clouds a little bit. And because we have a gradient in the sky, I actually like to have my clouds be a little bit transparent, at least the base shape of the clouds be a little bit transparent. So what we can do for that is just a lower the opacity of the clouds and procreate super easy. You can just tap on a little N next to the check mark and just play with the slider until you see something you're happy with. I'm probably going to lower mine quite a lot well, quite a lot, around 50%, I think, to start with. But this is something we can play with as we keep going, of course. Otherwise, same thing. I'm just going to create a new layer above this clouds layer. I'm going to rename it to clouds painting. And I'm going to go back to the original color that I used for the clouds. So this one right here, we can come back in with the original color and it's going to look lighter. And with the same brush, we're going to do the same kind of painting, but instead of having strokes, we're going to have semicircles, so C curves. And those C curves, you want to place them kind of like we were drawing smaller clouds within the big clouds. So what I mean by that is I could have a kind of section of this cloud here, kind of at the bottom using the same kind of shapes, but over the basic cloud. And you're just going to layer a few of those to start building and shaping your cloud. Otherwise, same thing, you can come back in and just create a smoother transition by either color picking and starting to blend or manually making the color you were just using a little bit darker. Anything you need to do to just have a little bit more control over that transition between the two colors. As you can see, it's really trial and error. There's no right or wrong way to do this. As long as it looks good to you, that's really all that matters. And you can also come back in with a even lighter version of your base color. So in the color palette, I'm going to use both of these right here, starting with the darker one and then finishing with this one, which is pure white. 
Now pure white, you do want to use it very sparingly though. So in the next step, we're really just going to be accentuating with a few little dots here and there. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave me a comment below letting me know which vibe you have in your piece. So it could be the season or the type of day. In my case, I have a pretty vibrant, summery, bright green landscape. And if you're a little bit confused with what is the secret password thing, it's a game that we play here in all the long form illustration, step-by-step -step tutorials. I hide either a question like today or a single word for you to find. And believe it or not, that little game actually gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you. So again, if you've watched this far, just let me know essentially the vibe of your piece and then we're going to keep going. So something like this. That being said, because these are clouds, I want them to look extra fluffy. So I'm personally going to add a tiny little bit of blur, but you could just keep it like that if you really want something super painterly. So same thing again to add blur in the adjustment panel right here at the top. Gaussian blur. And here I'm going to keep it super, super subtle. So probably around 5 or 6%, really barely anything. So once more, feel free to pause the video here to keep creating your painting effect. I know at this stage it looks absolutely crazy, but bear with me when we start adding the details in the next chapter. It's going to make the piece look so much better. Right now, I agree with you, it is a bit of a mess. But again, trust me, trust the process, we're going to get there. Great, so once you have all your basic shapes and the paintings, if you want, you could go ahead and just merge the different layers and the painting layers. So for example, merging Hill 4 painting and Hill 4. You could keep them separate if you want, but I want my file to be a little bit better organized. So I'm just going to go ahead and merge them really quickly. And then we're going to come back in and we're going to add a bunch of details to, again, just make the piece look, well, significantly better than it does. Let's put it that way. So we're going to start in the front and then we're going to go way back. Starting with foreground, adding some really sharp blades of grass. So you could just go ahead and create a new layer in front of everything and renaming that new layer to grass. On my grass here, I wanted to contrast with the rest, but also bring back some of that darker bluish green in this hill. So I'm going to pick a darker bluish green. So in the color palette, I'm going to start with this one right here, which was one that we used on the hills. And same brush, but quite a bit smaller. You can test it out again. we're going to draw some blades of grass. Now I'm going to draw mine all curved towards the right so that it looks like it's a little bit windy, but you could just keep them straight or really whatever you want. So keeping it super simple, still there's our details, but they're not really refined details. We're going again with something super painterly as a style. That being said, I'm gonna come back in and refine those blades of grass a little bit by adding some slightly darker ones, just to add a little bit more depth. So in the color palette, I'm going to pick this color right here at the top of the hill, or at the top of this column, which was the darkest color we used for this hill. And I'm going to add some extra darker blades of grass. So keeping it very, very, very simple, as you can see, I'm going to leave it pretty much like that for the grass. Now I'm going to move on from there and add some little white flowers on the hill and some extra blades of grass on the hill itself. Now you could go ahead and paint those straight on hill four. I think that's actually what I'm going to do or you could create another layer if you're not sure of yourself. But again, here I'm going with a painterly style so I want everything to be quite quick and efficient. 
So for the flowers, we're just going to go with a nice white, which in the color palette, again, is at the bottom of the cloud column we have here. Just pure white. And with the same brush, we're going to draw some little dots with varying size on, at least in my case, that's what I'm going to do, on this lower section of the hill. I'm going to have them be quite dense on the right and then get progressively more sparse towards the left. Then as I mentioned, I'm just going to add some blades of grass and those blades of grass, I'm just going to use the lightest green I have in my heel. So I can just color pick that. Come in with a slightly brush, a slightly smaller brush, I should say, sorry. And just add a few blades of grass here and there. So we definitely don't want to overdo it at this stage, but it can help add a little bit more dimension. Now I'm also going to draw some little bushes right here, right before we get to the lake. Those bushes are just going to be a bunch of different greens that we use in the rest of the hill, but they're going to be the same shape we use for the clouds. So you can have a small to medium sized brush here. Again, the size, the exact one doesn't matter. And we're going to start with the darkest area that we have in the hill. So really here, it's just like you're painting some little green clouds, I guess, on, on the grass. I might also refine this kind of line, make it look like the hill. It's kind of in two parts, so I might add a shadow on this section right here. Might be a bit hard to do, let's see. Yeah, kind of here. Yeah, so it looks like this part of the hill is significantly further than this one right here. Otherwise, I'm just going to come back on these bushes and add a bit of highlight on the right section, or on the right of them, I should say. And again, to do that, I'm just going to use the same kind of shapes that I used to map out the clouds, so little blobs and C-curves. Maybe adding two levels of, of lights on them, so one subtle level and then one highlight. So the next thing I'm going to draw is actually a path that goes throughout the hills in the back. So starting on this dark green and going on the other ones. And if we follow the same strategy as we used for the hills, it's going to be darker the closer it is to us and then lighter the further away it is. Now this path, I like to create it on a separate layer because I find it kind of hard to have the right shape and the right curvature. So it's helpful to be able to erase. So we're going to create that layer above all the hills on which the path is going to be, but below hills four and the lake. So in my case, above hill three, and I'm going to rename that layer to path. Now I just want to have a little dearth path, but you could have 
another color if you want. If you were going with a dearth pad like me, we're going to pick this kind of dirty brown right here on the top of this column. Otherwise, same brush, same technique, we're just going to map out a path. So I'm going to go with a really curvy shape. And one thing to keep in mind, no matter which shape you're using, not only is the path going to get lighter the further away it is, but it's also going to get smaller, of course. So I'm going to start with this shape right here in the front. Again, very quick, very loose. And I'm going to already come back and make some areas of it a little bit darker. So if we go in the color palette, I'm going to use this darker brown right under the one we just used. And I'm going to add that on the bottom section of the path. So roughly here, again, super quick, super loose, and then just like we did for the rest, I'm going to come back in and create a transition by color picking and manually tweaking the colors as needed. Now one thing that I like to do, depending on the brush you're using, but if you're using the same brush as I am using, if I just go ahead and color pick the original color I used here, whenever you zoom in a lot, you can kind of go ahead and color pick literally between the two color. You can see you're going to get a transition color and I like to just color pick that and use that to create, uh, well, my transition. And towards the top, we're going to go in with a lighter color, which is also the one we're going to use for the other sections of the path. So in the color palette, it is at the bottom of the column. It's quite a bit brighter, so you could honestly omit the top here or just add the tiniest little bit. You would have to blend it in, of course. Here I'm really just erasing, by the way, with a, a, a basic round brush, so just the most basic eraser you have, essentially. And then I'm just going to come back in and pick my original light brown and draw some very small paths that go far away in the distance. Maybe making that one a little bit paler, especially on the top, that section that is in the light. Just manually making it brighter. Again, no specific exact color is needed at all here. But I think that does help. Now from there we're going to keep going back adding some details. The next ones that we're going to add are going to be some big trees on this darker hill. And because those are so big, I'm going to draw them on a separate layer. Now some of those trees are going to be overlapping with the path on the far away hills, so I'm going to create the layer above the layer of the path. Otherwise I'm going to rename that layer to trees. And here we're just going to go with slightly different version of that green, which in the color palette is going to be all of this color. So we're going to start with the darker one and then using the lighter two to add the highlights. But it's going to be the same shape we use for the clouds and for these bushes.
Great. Now you might have noticed when we were working on the hill itself that there was one green in the column that we didn't use, which was this brightest one at the bottom of the column. And the reason for that is I wanted to map out the trees first and then come back in with this green and add some highlights around the trees. So we're going to pick this lighter green now. We're going to go back on the hills three layer and we're going to add that highlight between the trees which is going to create the illusion that these trees are casting or there's a shadow at least behind the trees. So really just coming in between the trees with that lighter green very quickly of course. This is still not about more than just blobs that we're painting. And you could blend those in, of course. I think I'm going to leave mine pretty not blended. I don't know. I think I like the look. So, there we go. <laughs> Although I feel like this one might be a little bit too big. Yeah, there we go for real. <laughs> now from there, we're going to add a few more trees, but this time really far away on this hill. So we're just going to paint them straight on the hills to layer. And these trees are going to be the same color as this pale green we just used to add the highlights. And they're just going to be one color. So you can just go over and add these kind of little triangular shape. Although I'm saying we're using the same color right now, it looks a little bit dark. So I'm lying to you. We're going to color pick the color of the hill. And we're going to make it a little bit darker. Now I'm going to add it in the color palette just so you can have it when you're following along, it's going to be right here at the bottom of this list. So the same list that we use for the rest of that hill, or the same column, I should say. So we're really just sprinkling the trees here in groups of one, two, or three. I know one is not a group, <laughs> but you get the idea. Just a few here and there. Now we're also going to refine the clouds a little bit by just adding some more paint really stroke around them because we added the blur now they look quite blurry which is nice for clouds but it doesn't really match the rest of the piece. So we're just going to go back on the clouds layer and we're just going to color pick a few of the different colors we have going on there and add some extra dots, extra strokes and maybe also extra clouds like slightly different shapes. So let's say I go here and show you an example of the little strokes around the clouds. It could really just be picking kind of a color that is on the edge and then just coming in and adding some strokes to kind of, yeah, shape the cloud. That's also something you do not want to overdo. You don't want to do that over the entire cloud, but a few sections can again, just kind of help reel in that, uh, that painting vibe that we have going on in the rest. So that's one thing you could do. You also can come in with a ladder section or you could also color pick a ladder area of your cloud and add maybe some smaller kind of straight clouds. Not a whole lot of them, but just a few that can help again, just break up the otherwise really smooth uh, vibe of these clouds. And you can also come back in and add some strokes that are not on the outside, that are not extra clouds, but just to um, Sorry, I got distracted. Just to add some crispness to the clouds. So really just adding some dots, maybe some extra strokes within the clouds. Again, you don't want to overdo this, but that can help bring the clouds, keep them fluffy, but bring them more in tune with the rest of the piece. And 
the last thing I'm going to do is just add some birds that are really going to make the eye flow through the piece. And you could draw them on the clouds layer if you want, but I want to be able to move them around because they're so important. So I'm just going to create a new layer above the clouds. And I'm going to rename this new layer to birds. Now the birds, I'm just going to draw them a darker version of the sky. So in the color palette, it is this one right here, but you could go with anything else, of course. And with a slightly smaller brush, I'm going to draw the pretty classic bird shape. So the kind of M but not quite as intense as that. It's going to be a little bit flatter, and I'm also going to thicken the middle to make it look a little bit more bird-like. And then of course moving them as needed to make sure we're really happy with our composition. But otherwise that's it. If you enjoyed this video and want more landscape and background tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. And they're not all in this painterly style. Some are in more cartoonish style, some are in more digital looking style. Really, there's a bunch of different options for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I post every Saturday with bonus videos on Tuesdays. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.